Hello. Hi. Hola. Let's get right to a quick secret about ant landscapes that have been so useful. In 279, they're even more useful. There's user preferences and add-ons and ant landscapes and landscapes. Landscapes. There it is. Oh, A-N-T is an acronym. Gotcha. So if you go to the ac uh, to the uh, documentation, you'll see that it now includes erosion, which is really cool because they've always appeared to me as just noise. But now with erosion, you can do these things and make water run down the mountains. So the only thing that's kind of bad about this is that these uh, erosion images happen in weight paint mode weight paints they're visible in weight paint mode let's take a quick look at what that means i'll hit t to open my tool shelf i will expand it because it's always too darn short and i like that expanded view so i'm going to hit Control u and save that for life now i'm going to hit shift a and because that add-on is enabled it's under meshes as landscape there is a good default landscape meaning you know good as in there it is I could take just this one but it doesn't have quite enough detail so I'm gonna increase that detail to 256 by 256 and see what that looks like it gives me some good geometry some good stuff to bite on control space to hide the uh, manipulator widget most importantly it has a big bowl here that can gather water if only we could get it to erode correctly I'm gonna push this up a little bit more let's see what 512 does it is tough to optimize when you get this up high but 512 gives us a, a pretty good mesh it's not crazy detailed but you can always use normal mapping or bump mapping to really get some extra detail if you had to get close up now I'm going to tab into edit mode and I'm gonna hit U and just let the computer unwrap that any way it wants it is gonna concentrate on this for a while and if you have a slow processor or an older computer it will take even longer than it's taking me now It's finished unwrapping, and if we take a look at that unwrapping with control left arrow five times, it has really done a good job of spreading all those polygons out on a square. It's a little wobbly because some of the peaks require a different kind of uh, warping. So control right arrow five times gets us back to the default layout. I'm going to tab out of edit mode, so I'm back in object mode, and it's very responsive and happy. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at things, and there's our UV map that we just made. It's that UV map of the square. Now, if I lower this and shrink these so they're not in the way, I have landscape tools available right here. I can go to a landscape eroder. And after some thinking, it has deposited for us brand new vertex groups. Vertex groups can be viewed as weight paint. Now, on the documentation we just looked at, they had done erosion with iterations of 25 and 50. So I'm just going to go right between the two, basically, and do something like 37. I'm going to hit Enter. After an uneventful wait of about one minute, I have ended up with <laughs> really melted wax style of erosion, which I'm just going to hang on to. But I was right about this bowl, about this basin. Uh, what I'm going to try right now is to pull it back to 27 and see if it undoes.
and it does. It was another wait of about one minute, and these iterations can be pulled backwards if you decide that what you've typed in is too much. I've been waiting for something like this for a very long time. But there's a hiccup. We can go from object mode into wait paint. Wait paint shows what has just happened. And wait paint, the blue is effectively zero influence, and reds are essentially an influence of one. Everything in between is between zero and one, which is just how Blender enjoys working, which is how we enjoy working with Blender. Now you can use weight paint information when you scatter particles. And so if we did something, we could control its density, length, clump, roughness, etc., by using capacity, this very appearance. And where it's zero, there would be less density. Where it's one, there would be greater density. So just using the arrow keys, there's capacity, there's the packed sediment, there's sediment. Woo, some heavy duty sediment there. The flow rate is really cool. How fast does that water run down the mountain according to what the uh, computer calculated? Scour, I'm not entirely sure. I guess that's where sediment really dug into the rock. Water, where does water, well, not really pool, but I don't know, the height of the water or something. Scree, I'm afraid I don't know what that is. The rain map, I think, is almost like a colored height map. So the problem is that if we create a material for this, we are going to try to alter different colors. Shift F3 will get us into the node editor. And I'm going to do a mix of colors right now. So color, mix RGB, a black and a white. Well, that may be a little too vague. Let's do a something cool. Orange and a green. And I'm going to put that into the color, the uh, diffuse BSDF there. And I want to have the factor be the information about the capacity. So I'm going to type this in a factor and I'm going to type in capacity. So now I hit Shift F5, I can go back to 3D view. And now if I look at this, it's all orange. It's all orange because capacity is a vertex group. What we really want, where did my UV map go? Where is my UV map? And why do I have a oh, particle system? Is something I can get rid of? Pardon me. Okay. I had something on the timeline that I didn't really want to see. So this capacity doesn't do us any good in the material. I'm going to find out what happened to my UV map. Oh, we redid the geometry. Good lesson. I'm going to create a new set of vertex colors, and I'm going to call them coal capacity. Now I'm going to go in and spend a few minutes redoing my UV map since I destroyed the last one. Hmm. We have our UV map back, and uh, I have been given so much time to think. I'm tabbing out of that. This geometry took longer to unwrap than the last geometry, and we should take a look. That's left. Okay. That's a weird one. So our violin mountain should be saved. I'm going to hit Control S. And I'm going to go up, create a new folder, and I think I am going to call this Violin Mountain. Violin Mountain is going to be, you know, sometimes when it takes Blender a while to do something, I uh, remember that I should save, because I would hate to lose that progress. Everything we've done so far is saved in permanent memory. There's nothing floating in the cache, I think. Vertex groups are um, 
are in the memory. So remember I said it's weight paint, and what we want to do is get it to vertex paint. How do we get that into our available coal capacity? I did some research on the internet, and I found an old discussion from the 29th of April, 2013. Kakar made an add-on called Weights to Vertex Colors Add-on. I clicked that link, and it took me to bitbucket.org, Curasod, and here is a Python script. I'm going, and I just never seem to do this right. Um, people. You code people. What is this stuff? Where is the downloads? There is a download. Download repository. And now I'll be allowed to download that. I can go into it and I will show you what's inside. This is what's inside. A little blender file and a folder for the source. That source is vertex color weight transfer. It's exactly what we need and it's only five kilobytes in size. Here is part of your secret tip. Quick secret. How do we install this as an add-on when it's not readily available? What I could do is copy it into Blender Scenes. That's actually not a bad idea. I have a folder called Blender Scenes, and here we go. I'll just copy it right into it, or move it, I suppose. Moving it, closing this, going to File, going to User Preferences, going to the Add-ons, getting rid of my earlier search. I'm going to go down to the bottom and install Add-on from a file. What is already visible in some of my history is... Blender scenes. There is only one Python script available, and it's the one. Install the add-on from the file. It's in. It's done. But I haven't enabled it. So I'm going to enable it. Now one thing I noticed is that there's no documentation button. So I'm going to tell you, use this at your own risk. I've used it once already. I'm using it a second time now, and I think it's fine. I don't have to do anything more. And now it's available to me. My problem is, I don't know where it is. I don't know how to make it available to me. So I followed some of the pictures, and I know that I have to have my desired vertex group highlighted. I have to have a UV map so that I can paint at all. And I have to have my desired vertex colors highlighted. Once these are highlighted, I can press the space bar and do a search for what I just installed. It's called Weight to Vertex Call. Obviously it is not case sensitive. When I click this, I wait patiently. As long as you just saw me wait, I didn't edit that. And you can do it in color and wait patiently. <laughs> that should look familiar. It looks just like I don't want to do it in color. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid to lose that if I click on something else. It looks just like weight paint mode. Oh, please let me go to black and white. It's not in black and white. Okay. I'm going to assume it will let me do this again. So there's good practice. I want it in black and white. I don't want it in color. Oh, it remembered my last thing. Good. So now I'll just... Uh, and I'll hit enter this time and it has left the color enabled I will disable the color option which was the default and this is a lifesaver for anyone who wanted to use a material on an ant landscape now 
we're going to go into Shift F3, and we're going to adjust these a little bit. Uh, actually, we might not. What we're going to do is we're going to name it correctly. COL capacity. There it is. That is a quick secret. That is a lifesaver for the ANT landscapes. And I have been waiting about two and a half years for that. So I hope that this helps a couple of people. I'd like to see what else you use the add-on for. We could now use this to make the bumpy parts bumpy and the eroded parts smooth. And that's really so much more than the cost of free. I mean, that's just completely valuable. I really like that. So I do hope that helped. If you're just starting, get ready. And con felicidad. Thanks. I want you to succeed. And thanks for watching.